All right, so we're going to dive into another one of the conversations that Zach had while doing his CCO rounds on Tuesday. Uh, a conversation was had about preparing for throwing. So what kind of upper body plyos could we potentially get into that are maybe falling a little bit more under that GPP or that general physical preparation category, um, preparing people a little bit more for rate of force development, stretch shortening cycle, things are a little bit more general before getting to that specific end of the spectrum. So, you know, what are some things that you talked about? Absolutely. And when we talk about throwing, the context of this conversation had to specifically do with throwing a baseball, but it could be any object that we're throwing. When I look at problems or hiccups with return to throwing and the tolerance to returning to throwing, typically you can always circle back to they either don't have tolerance to the position that they're getting into, so we should have cleared all that mobility range of motion wise earlier, or they don't have tolerance to the velocity and the amount of force that they're asking the person to throw with, or it's a program design and maybe they, they have the mobility, they have the force, but they're just progressing the volume of throwing too much. So before we even get to that though, we need to do some sort of upper extremity plyometrics that focus on force production and propulsion qualities. Things that you wanna keep in mind with this, if that final phase that we want to get back to is getting the arm away from the body in that full layback position, there's a lot of steps that need to be made until we get to there. So before we even get into unilateral throwing, we want to get into some sort of bilateral or shared effort positions with our throwing. We also want to keep in mind, prior to going overhead, we want to look at something below the shoulder. What we want to keep in mind is not only are we looking at unilateral versus bilateral position, but are we looking at overhead versus below the shoulder type throws? And I would, I would argue that your safest and easiest entry point is going to be bilateral chest height or below the shoulder type throwing motion. So. Uh, in our clinical environment, medicine balls are an easy way to implement introduction of throwing and plyometrics. So I'm thinking of things where we're looking at uh, just like a simple chest pass, either to an individual or off of a wall. You can standardize it by the distance you have uh, from the area that they're throwing to or what you're verbally telling them to do from an effort standpoint. Then we can still keep it below the shoulder but we can start going off to one side, almost more like a shot put style throw where we're biasing one arm and we just have the other arm kind of guiding the motion. From there, we can still go two handed, but then we could get into more of our overhead, almost like a soccer style type throw in, or we're looking at slam progression. So going from an overhead position and slamming the ball down to the ground. Uh, but the things that I wanna keep in mind two arm progressing to one arm below the shoulder progressing to above the shoulder i think of other things too i don't know um you know if, if you want to touch on this but with anything involving a bar so potentially the the bar having a little bit more of a harder end feel whereas the i shouldn't even say end feel but whereas the ball there's actually a release and then the arm kind of slowly can decelerate in space so when i think of what I'm referring to, I think of more of your body weight row, you're in a rogue rig, you're at maybe like a 45 degree angle, you've pulled your chest up towards the bar and you're potentially working on catching yourself. So it's another way to just kind of introduce um, that spectrum of force, depending on how you, you dose it. Um, you could potentially get into things overhead, but you know, the biggest thing that I always think about is just preparing people for that, that distraction, right? It's one thing to yeah. get here into the layback position. Uh, it's another thing to also prepare people for that long axis distraction at the end of throwing. So anything you want to add to that? No, and I'm glad that you delineated that as well, because a lot of people, uh, we do think very heavy on that force production and the propulsion mechanism. And a lot of people do struggle with tolerating distraction. These will be the individuals that when they are doing a medicine ball throw, you're not going to see them follow through. So they get kind of those alligator arms or they short arm it and they never let the elbow extend and the hand get away from their body. 
you gave some great examples, either utilizing a bar, utilizing uh, TRX. Um, earlier on, from a strength training standpoint, these are where we're exaggerating our rowing motions and we're allowing them to get the hand very far away from the body. We're probably implementing some degree of trunk rotation with it as well. You can modify tempo going at slower, faster paces. I really like kettlebells as well for this. Um, having them do kettlebell drops. So where yep. they're holding the kettlebell, they drop it and they gotta catch it with the other one to decelerate. Like you mentioned, you can dictate the range of motion they're going through so that they either have a very long range of motion to decelerate, well, more of a long response plyometric, or you can have them rapidly decelerate as well. Both of them provide value. Um, obviously with throwing, if we're trying to mimic the throwing demand, we're gonna see them go through a very large range of motion with an arm away from the body. But I think to even make that determination that they're appropriate to be throwing, we should be testing and training in these different environments leading up to it.